Welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go nine hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about. Whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone had a great day, safe day. Let's make it a great night, folks. Let's take a look at one of our four agreements. Do you always do your best, but don't overdo. Always do your best, but don't overdo. When you overdo, you deplete your body and you go against yourself. And it will take longer to accomplish your goal. Market-wise, let's take a look at it out here. We had the Dow Industrials up 55, NASDAQ up 23, S&P's up 6.5, gold contract down $6.30, trading at 1,605 an ounce. Silver off 8 cents at $28.76 an ounce. Platinum up 24 bucks at 1,581 an ounce. Copper up three pennies at 3.43 a pound. Light sweet crude up 80 cents, trading out at 80, 92 dollars and 96 cents. That baby's on its way back down to 85, folks. Bonds down 25 ticks, trading out at 142.26. King dollar off 181 ticks at 83.03. She's building some costs at 84 and a quarter. She backed down at light of volume. Euro up 51 ticks, trading at 129.33. And the yen up 97, 87 rather, at one at 96.03. My phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world? In the world of the S&Ps, let's take a look at them. What do you have? S&Ps get up there to 1561. You're at about 1557 right now. We do uh, 639 million versus uh, 731. We go look at the SPY, and what you'll have with the SPY is this, folks. Uh, SPY got to a price point today of 155.95, uh, closes out the day at 155.69, and you had volume out here of 107 versus 167. Now, what does that say? Well, bottom line is that um, you got over this uh, high uh, from yesterday, uh, where slightly. Um, Above it right now, uh, bottom line, uh, that was at the close. And th this is a failure on price and a failure on vo uh, volume, folks. Uh, and this is what, you know, we were talking about this yesterday. This is what large downdrafts are all about. High volatility, fast moves, extraordinary. It's exactly what we had at the close out here today. So with the SPY, what you're going to have, SPY is going to be under the high of yesterday, has light of volume, failure right across the board. Dow Industrials. We take a look at the Dow Industrials. What you have with the Dow Industrials? Flat market. Uh, Dow is up 55 bucks. Same deal with the Dow, though. NASDAQ Composite. This is what you have with the Composite. Now, Composite gets to a price point today of uh, 32.57. You close out at 32.54, and bottom line, it's the same type of setup uh, because what you're going to see here is that uh, this Composite actually, uh, because the last 10 minutes is going to be low, be below the 32.54. Uh, NDX. If we look at the three Qs, what you have inside the three Qs is this: they slammed that um, door shut, folks, on the S&P futures and the Nasdaq futures coming into the close. Uh, the Qs right now uh, are at the 68, 67 level, and it's uh, 68.70. That would have been the number if it closed over it. It didn't. Now, the thing that's amazing, and you got, you, you, you got to wrap your head around this a little, folks, and this is what it is. If you've been listening to the press at all today, and this is just, you know what blows my mind? Google, folks, 2007, 2008, and it doesn't mean we're going, I, I certainly don't think we're going back, like, you know, a market like that we had there, okay? But <laughs> what you have is this. You have, I, there was, every single analyst is out there, Larry Fink is out there with um, BlackRock saying, no. Cyprus doesn't matter. It's a blur up. It's nothing. Guess what, folks? The banks, it's nothing, but guess what? The banks can't open. It's nothing, but guess what? The European banks and our own banks are probably on the hook to them for tri mil hundreds of billions of dollars. Okay, it's something, folks. Okay? Um, if it was nothing, why not just open up the banks? Bottom line, they can't open up the banks. They can't open up the banks because there's going to be a run on the banks. Extraordinary. When are they going to do it? Now they got it pushed off to the 25th of March, actually the 26th of March, and we're at the 20th right now, you know. So bottom line, wait a few more hours, you know, they'll push it off another four or five more days. Bottom line is that the only way they're going to be able to open up the banks is to turn around and basically recapitalize the banks. And, you know, I don't know how they're going to do that either. It's just, it, the, the whole thing is a trip, let me tell you. 
877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Want to know what's going on in your world. Let's go over to that gold market. So gold out here today. This is what we did. Now, I like the setup. We, we pulled back. We pulled back with uh, 119,000 contracts. And that's the way that you want to see a pullback happen, folks. Why? Because what we have is this. Is that the, the last, well, the, the, the contract has been going down for quite a while. The uh, high volume benchmark is the top of that is 1609. You had got it over it yesterday with lighter volume. That doesn't work. So you come back inside of today with lighter volume. And that's what you want to see happen. Why? Because that bar there, folks, has 260,000 contracts. So now you're back inside the bar, and what I'd love to see is now a test of the 1583. And what the 1583 mark, folks, is this. That was the high of the last, the, you, know, you know, it doesn't have to go to the bottom. The bottom of that bar is 1560, the top is 1583. That was the test of the high volume bar. We come back into that with lighter volume, then you get, you, we're going to have some real action. And that action I'm talking about is top side. And the action I'm also talking about, folks, what will be really interesting is to see if, in fact, the dollar and gold can run at the same time. You know, on a um, common sense basis, I can see how that can happen. Why? Um, and, you know, I got this question asked many times, you know, whether it's 2003, 4, 5, and it says, no, no way. Uh, and, you know, this is where just markets change. And, you know, we'll see. I'm not, I'm not hell-bent on that it's going to happen at the same time. But I can absolutely see in a common-sense way, because of Euroland and they're done, how that can happen. Because it's about demand. And in Euroland, anyone that has their money in the bank is like, hey, they're going to take my money. If they're going to take your money, you might as well put it into gold and stash the gold. That's the bottom line. Because it, it doesn't even have to go up. It'll hold its value. The dollar bill there after period because it's a liquidity in the dollar bill. So I see, I could see how that could happen. We go over to the bond market. This is what you have with the bond market today. Bond market sideways move down 25 ticks. Bonds are building cars to get to 144. King dollar. What's King dollar doing out there? She's doing the exact same thing. They can't whack this baby down. Uh, King dollar got to a price point today, a low of 82.72. Had 30,000 contracts. Um, rejected that low. Closed out the day at a uh, 8304, and when that, which she was doing, King Dollar was going into 49,000 contracts, folks, with 30,000. Just absolutely rejected it. King Dollar wants to not only move, but she's going to move big. Um, after the close out here, Oracle uh, came out with numbers that didn't make their numbers. Oracle closed at $35.76. Um, that is trading out at 33 uh, 31 right now. And what you're going to see with Oracle, uh, Oracle never actually closed out. Uh, well, you have two different things. Uh, $34 was the last time she had any volume. Um, she's going to break that. Uh, and numbers go like this and with Oracle. Where is she? Where is she? Okay. Uh, the estimate, uh, bottom line estimate was $0.66. Cents. Oracle made $0.65. Cents. The one that I suspect that's killing Oracle right now, though, meaning being down uh, 9%, uh, 8%, is that the Top line estimate was $9.37 billion, and they took in $8.97 billion. Federal Express, FDX, that came out this morning. Those numbers uh, shot big time. FedEx was down $7.33 today. And when you take a look at FedEx, what you're going to see real clearly, uh, FedEx is at $99. Last time it had any volume whatsoever, meaning on the way up, was $90. Uh, that is going to be down at $90 in a heartbeat. If you want to see the correlation, so the correlation on the way up, folks, October, um, 90 million shares. I mean, 8.9 million shares, price point $90. She makes a high with $108, so she gets 18 more dollars than that. 1.7 million, or really 1.7 million versus 8.9 million. People are walking in the store, no one's in the store, they're giving their money up. What ends up happening, that... Basically, it had stayed up there since February 6th, blows out of bed with 11 million shares and takes everyone to the cleaners uh, that had bought that stock all the way back from January 24th. You put this on a weekly basis, and what you're going to see, and this is where the, the real problems are going to come in, folks. There's many equities that absolutely broke a consolidation on the way up and broke it with lighter volume. You're going to see FedEx is the first one back inside it. And 
what you're going to see is that we're talking about a consolidation, folks, that goes back to 2009. It broke it with lighter volume. And when we're talking about lighter volume, we're talking about it broke it with 40 million versus 90 million. What ends up happening? Give it two weeks. Two weeks, it not only got back, it got back inside it. When you go back inside it, FedEx is on its way down to 64. You stay right there. We're coming right back.